Imagine this, you're sitting in a cafe, your phone resting on the table, connected as usual to your mobile network. You're not calling anyone, not sending any messages, just scrolling. But what if I told you that right now your phone could be silently talking to a fake cell tower? A machine built by someone who wants to know where you are, who you talk to, and even intercept your private messages. This isn't science fiction. It's a real technique used by hackers, investigators, and intelligence agencies around the world. Welcome to the world of IMSI catchers. And you know, that question is way more real than you might think. This isn't some sci-fi concept. It's happening right now. This kind of silent surveillance is actively being used today, and it works by exploiting a really fundamental part of how our mobile networks were designed. The scary part is completely invisible to most of us. All right, let's dive in. So here's what we're gonna do in this explainer. We're gonna pull back the curtain on this whole hidden world. First up, we'll talk about the invisible threat itself. Then we'll get into the nitty gritty of how the trick actually works. After that, we'll look at a real world example of this stuff out in the wild. And of course, we'll cover how to spot the warning signs and what you can actually do to take back your privacy. All right, let's get right into it and unmask this technology. But to do that, we first have to understand the one single piece of information that makes your phone uniquely yours out of the billions of phones on the planet. And that little piece of info, it's called your IMSI, which stands for International Mobile Subscriber Identity. The easiest way to think about it is like a serial number for your SIM card. It's this unique 15-digit code that basically tells the network, hey, it's me. Every single time you make a call or use data, your phone is sending out this IMSI to the cell tower to identify itself. It's the key that unlocks the whole network for you. But here's the problem. That key can be copied. Okay, so here is the fundamental design choice, or you could say design flaw, that makes all of this possible. See, your phone is always scanning for the best connection. It's programmed to do one thing, find the strongest signal so you get a clear call or fast data. But here's the catch. It operates on pure trust. It just assumes that the tower with the strongest signal is a real one from your carrier. It never asks for ID, never asks for credentials. And that blind trust? That's the exact vulnerability MC catchers were built to exploit. So how does an attacker actually turn this blind trust into a trap? Well, let's walk through the process. It's surprisingly simple, but also incredibly powerful. A four-step digital deception. Okay, so first, the attacker just turns on the IMSI catcher. It immediately starts blasting out a signal that's way stronger than any of the real cell towers nearby. Now remember, your phone is always looking for that strongest signal. So it sees this powerful new tower, and this is the really scary part, it automatically disconnects from the real network and connects with a fake one. Boom. It happens seamlessly. You don't get a notification, nothing. Then, once you're connected, the catcher basically says, hey, who are you? And your phone happily replies, handing over its unique IMSI number. And just like that, the attacker has you, they've got your unique ID. From that moment on, they can track your location, and depending on how fancy their device is, they can do a whole lot more. Let's really put these two side by side to see the difference. On one hand, you've got the legitimate tower. It's verified, it cares about security, and encrypts your connection you know, it's a trusted part of the system. But then you look at the IMSC catcher. It's totally unverified. It doesn't prioritize security. It exploits trust. And here's the really dangerous part. It can actually force your phone to downgrade its security, often kicking it all the way back to the old 2G network. And 2G has notoriously weak, easily breakable encryption. It basically becomes this invisible middleman sitting right between you and the real network. And once that downgrade to 2G happens, oh man, the attacker's power level just skyrockets. They can potentially listen in on your unencrypted phone calls and read your SMS text messages. I mean, this is exactly why you always hear security experts saying, don't use SMS for two-factor authentication. But it gets worse. They can also log your movements with pinpoint accuracy, basically creating a live map of your day. They can even do this sort of digital census of an entire area, figuring out every single phone that's there and who is standing next to who. Okay. I know all this technical talk can feel a little abstract, so let's make it real. Let's look at what this actually looks like when it's happening to a real person. We're gonna dive into a real world example of this stuff in action. So our story kicks off with a journalist. They're in Eastern Europe covering a huge political protest. I mean, they're right in the middle of this massive crowd, just trying to do their job, when they start to notice something's not right with their phone. It wasn't one big obvious thing, but a bunch of small, weird symptoms. 
The very first thing they noticed was the battery. It was just plummeting, draining way, way faster than normal. And that was weird because they weren't doing anything that should kill the battery, you know? No long videos, no GPS running constantly. It was only later, when a cybersecurity team got their hands on the phone and looked at the network logs, that they found the smoking gun. The phone had been repeatedly connecting to a cell tower that, well, according to the official records, it didn't even exist. And the culprit? A mobile IMC catcher, probably hidden inside some ordinary-looking van just moving through the protest. It was just quietly forcing every phone nearby to connect to it, grabbing all their unique IDs and building this incredibly detailed map of who was in that crowd. And why does that matter? Well, the attackers could then see exactly which other phones were physically near the journalist's phone, which could mean identifying their secret sources. And this right here gets to the absolute heart of the danger. Think about it. Even if you're using a super secure app like Signal where your messages are totally encrypted, the MIS catcher still knows you were there. It knows your phone was at that exact spot, at that exact time, right next to that other specific phone. This is what's called correlation. And over time, an attacker can use just that location data to build a whole pattern of your life. They can see when you go to work, who you meet for coffee, where you live, your physical presence. That becomes the data. Yeah, this all sounds pretty scary, because it is. So the natural question is, okay, how can I tell if this is happening to me? Let's shift gears and talk about the warning signs, the things you might be able to spot if an IMSC catcher is nearby. Okay, so one of the biggest red flags is if your network connection suddenly tanks, like you've got a modern 4G or 5G phone, and then bam, it drops to 2G or even says emergency calls only. That could be a sign you're being forced onto an older network. Another thing to watch for, does your network name, you know, Verizon, T-Mobile, whatever, does it flicker or briefly change to some weird string of numbers? And just like with our journalist story, that sudden crazy battery drain is a huge indicator. Your phone is just working overtime trying to talk to that fake tower. Oh, and if you and everyone around you lose your signal at the exact same time, yeah, that's, that's highly suspicious. But look, we have to be realistic here. For most of us, these signs are super subtle. They're really easy to miss. You'd probably just think, ah, oh, bad reception, or that there's something wrong with your phone. Actually detecting this stuff in real time is incredibly difficult without specialized gear. And in most cases, people only find out it happened long after the attack is over. So if it's that hard to detect, what can we actually do about it? This brings us to what I think is the most important part of our chat today, moving from the problem to the solution. Let's talk about the practical things, the actual steps you can take to defend yourself digitally. First off, and this one is huge, use SMS as little as possible. Seriously, because those texts can be read on a 2G network, you should absolutely never use SMS for your two-factor authentication codes. Switch to an authenticator app, or even better, get a physical security key. Second, for any conversation that's even remotely sensitive, use apps with end-to-end -end encryption. I'm talking about Signal, WhatsApp, you know the drill. That way, even if someone intercepts the connection, all they get is gibberish. Third, keep your phone updated. Those OS updates from Apple and Google aren't just for new emojis, they're constantly adding security features to fight these kinds of attacks. And finally, if you do notice weird stuff happening with your network, report it, call your carrier, tell them about it. You pay for a secure network, you have a right to one. And look, while all these personal steps are really important, it's worth zooming out and asking a bigger question. This quote just nails it. Privacy shouldn't be a privilege, it should be a default. What this really means is that the real long-term fix isn't just on us. It's not our sole responsibility. This requires a systemic change. The big telecom companies, they need to build stronger authentication into their networks so our phones can actually verify the towers. And governments, they need to step up with policies that demand transparency and regulate who gets to use this kind of tech. This whole blind trust model that our cell networks are built on, honestly, it's a relic of a different time, and it is desperately in need of an update for the world we live in now. All right, so let's do a quick recap of the big takeaways here. At their core, MC catchers are just fake cell towers built to trick your phone. Once you're connected, they can grab your identity, track your location, and maybe even listen in on your unencrypted calls and texts. Remember, Actually detecting an attack is super hard, but protecting yourself really starts with just being aware of the threat. And the two most powerful things you can do right now, use encrypted apps for your chats and get away from using SMS for anything sensitive, especially those login codes. So let's end with this question. This technology works because it exploits the trust we all put in these invisible networks that connect our entire world. But knowledge? Knowledge is the first step to security. 
Now that you can see the invisible strings, now that you get how this basic part of your daily life can be used against you, the question isn't just what can be done anymore. The real question is, what are you going to do to take back control?